Uh, yesterday we learned about Yael. Gemara knows here. Today here, the Gemara Megillah doesn't speak about the Ayel, but it wonders how, how Esther can do what she did. That's on page uh, the Megillah. Page 15a. Sefta Megillah, page 15a. Uh huh. 15a3 on the left side. Which says the, the Megillah states further. See on the left side, 15 Abraham 3. The Megillah states further. <coughs> So Esther said to Mordechai, go and assemble all the Jews, right? Which is against the religion. What do you mean against the religion? Against the religion. You look at footnote 27, you see that? What? Who's translating? No, there's no, there's, she, she didn't say count. She said, assemble all the Jews together in prayer. She didn't say to count them. She said to assemble them in a, in a, in a mass prayer. Now, footnote 27, she eventually agreed to approach Achishverosh. Esther told Mordechai, let the noises call a Yehudim in Shushan. Go assemble all the Jews found in Shushan and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. And I and my maidens will also fast. Then will I go into the king, which is against the law, and if I am lost, I am lost. What do you mean against the law? Ashalo kadat. What do you mean against the law? Dat Moshe Yisrael. So she says, so the Gemara explains what she meant. Shebechol yoyim v'yoyim ad achshav ba'ones. Every day until now, I had sexual relations with Achashverosh under compulsion. See footnote 29? Had Esther not submitted to Ahasuerus' request, she would have been executed. As indeed Vashti was. See that? But now, but from now on, I will be going with my own consent. Why is that? Footnote 30. Once Esther approached Ahasuerus voluntarily, any ensuing sexual relations between them is considered to be having done with her consent. So therefore, the kasha avadati avadati, and therefore I am lost, I am lost. Why twice? Lost in this world, lost in all of Abba. And also she's saying that I am lost from my father's house, I am also lost from you. By submitting voluntarily to Ahasuerus, Esther would would be forever forbidden to Mordechai for a legitimate husband. You hear this? Footnote 32. Esther was married to Mordechai. We'll see uh, if you go back to page 13. We'll see. A married woman who engages in an extramarital relations is subsequently forbidden to her husband. So therefore she's saying what? Up until now, I could still go back to my husband Mordechai because a married woman taken against the will, as long as the husband is not a Cohen, can still go back to her husband. But once she submits voluntarily, then she can never go back to her legitimate husband. So that's what she's saying, I am lost. I'm sorry, Rabbi. Who, who yes? Was, who was her uncle? Mordechai was her uncle and also her husband. Right, right, In Jewish right. law, you're allowed to marry a, uh, an uncle can marry his niece. In Jewish law, an uncle is permitted to marry his niece. You cannot marry your aunt. That's called incest, but marrying your niece is okay in Jewish law. So Mordechai was her uncle, but he also was her husband. He was also her husband. Uh -huh. Toysus asks an interesting question over here. Kishen shavadati mi beis abba, kach avadati mi mcha. Toysus on the left column over here. Vim toymer, amai loy megarsha. Why didn't Mordechai divorce her? Iti materis av zireno. If you divorce her, and she has relations with another man, while she's divorced, first husband can take her back. 
So why didn't Mordechai divorce her? You yeah. have Yeah. Why did he allow her to commit adultery without giving her a divorce? If she's divorced, it's not adultery. So Tosha gives a very strange answer. Yes, Shlaima, if he should call my get, I'll pee aid him. Because when you divorce a woman, there has to be witnesses and publicity. And Mordechai was afraid. Pen Yisparsim Adover, Lamalchus. That uh, if there's a get, there has to be publicity. And the king would find out that what? That his minister is married to his queen. He was afraid that the king would kill him. So therefore, to protect his own life, he did not divorce his wife and allowed her to commit adultery. This is what Tulsa said. But he could have solved the problem by giving her a get. Yeah. But he didn't. Isn't what? Very strange. The whole thing is very strange. What is a get? What? what? It's a, it's a cardinal a sin. So, or a, 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 a sin that... It's just one of the three cardinal sins right, so then that you have to die for. If you are in a place so with that, that she, one, so then second no, life, he passed on the risk to, of him dying to her. That's right. To save his own life, he allowed his wife to commit adultery. Look out for number one. Who right, said that? Right. Fascinating. What? Fascinating. Very difficult. He could have divorced her. Then she would be a single woman. So it's not adultery. And then he can even take her back once the king tires of her. But once she's married to, to, and without a get, then she commits adultery. The first husband can never, never, never take her back. Did he have Ruach HaKodesh also? Oh, he had Ruach HaKodesh. So, that, okay. so, so that's, that's the, the standard answer. They right. both did it to Ruach HaKodesh. Right? Don't try this at home, Ayla. Don't right. try this at home. No, no, I'm this is a Ruach HaKodesh. Yeah. And this is a... Extra. Now, how do we know that he was married to her? That's what you want to ask. Go back to 13a. You turn back to 13a. If you are in a, in an, on an aisle or somewhere where there are no other Jews, yeah, 13a. You live in China and there is right. no, no Jews around. You. Right. And you want to divorce. You can't divorce a wife without a bezdin. You need a bezdin, right? Yeah. You get. You give a bezdin. I have to. 13a proves that they were married. Okay. What's your question? You know? Like, it's not possible, maybe I'm saying something wrong, but like, it's not possible to suppose that the Mordecai was not aware of uh, the point that he had to get divorced to her. How could he not be aware? He's the Rosh Hashanah Sanhedrin. He doesn't know the, uh, the halacha. He doesn't know the halacha, then who should know, right? He's the, uh-huh. he's the head of the Sanhedrin, right? So he knew mm. So the Gemara on 13a proves that they were married. One second, let me find the Gemara here. Uh huh. <clears throat> Page thirteen, Abraham three. Thirteen A three on the left side, where it says the Megillah states. You see the paragraph on the left side, the Megillah states. Not the Megillah answers, but the Megillah states. What does the word Megillah mean, Melech, in English? It means a scroll, right? right. The Megillah states, you see that? When her father and her mother had died, Mordechai took her. The text says he took her as his daughter. The text says that the uncle adopted her as his daughter, right? Taught the Mishim Rabbi Meir, listen to this. Now, even though the, the, the verse says Labat, it can be read Labat. He took her to be his home. What's a person's home? His wife. His wife. Labat el Labayit. So from here, the Talmud learns that Mordechai was, in fact, what? Married to Esther. Now, look at footnote 45. You see that? Hmm? On what basis can they add the Yod? Oh, right. One second. In scripture and Talmud, one's wife is commonly referred to as what? His home. His home, right? Now, when it says do not read, it's not Don't meant... Don't you want to move. <laughs> <laughs> now, when it says do not read, it doesn't mean that the rabbis are playing around with the scriptural text. No, they can't do that. Rather, it introduces an exposition of the word based on its similarity to another word. Ramea derives from the word... Lakacha, he took her. The word lakacha in scripture is a, is a term for marital uh, relations. Lakacha, he took her, which is a term to donate marriage. 
So if the verse actually meant that she was taken as a daughter, it should have said. Hello. Why don't they just say it directly? Why Mary, how are you? What time's your doctor's appointment? What time? Uh, you want to meet me at the hotel, and then we can uh, take the kids shopping. Thank you. That's, that's what it is. The Noyim Yehuda says that it was not. It was a raw shah, but but she still cannot go back to her husband, Why? even though it's a raw shah. Why? Because the law is that she committed adultery. So even though it was a raw shah, but the bottom line is that she can never go back to her first husband. Esther is the most tragic uh, heroine in Jewish history. She's a tragic heroine. No? Uh, yeah. So if the little girls would know who Queen Esther was, Avieza, nobody would dress up to be Queen Esther. A, a tragic heroine she was. She's the one who says, Eli, Eli, Lama Zaftani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They took it from us. Right? Well, it's, it's a possible yeah, But they took it from us. Yeah, it took everything from us. It's a possible and that uh, King David is anticipating what, uh, what Esther is going to say. My God, my God, why couldn't you find another way to save the Jewish people? Why did it have to be this way that I have to submit myself to commit a cardinal sin? Couldn't there be another way to, uh, to save the Jewish people? But uh, uh, life is full of mysteries and tragedies and paradoxes. Hmm? No. Yeah. Mordechai was one of the Nevi'im. You know that. He was considered a Navi. And Esther was a Navi, so therefore a Navi can suspend the Torah law as long as he does it on a temporary basis. What does it mean, suspend? Suspend, harad Yeah, but what does it mean? It means commit adultery. Or suspend. that Yom Kippur, the first Yom Kippur, yes. when no Solomon matter. dedicated the temple, that Yom Kippur, instead of fasting, they what? They feasted. They feasted. Rabbi, Don't try this at But they were not. Solomon was a Navi and he said, This Shem Kippur, instead of fasting, we're what? Feast. We're feasting. If he would have said, From now on, we're feasting on Yom Kippur, oh, that's a Navi Sheker. Oh, but if he said to the temple where we injunction, a Navi like Solomon, or Mordechai, or David, or a Navi on Mount Carmel, he told the Jews to bring an offering to Hashem 94 miles outside the temple. Bringing a carbon to Hashem, if you're not Jewish, you can do that. But a Jew, to bring a carbon to Hashem outside the temple is Chayat Koret. And yet Eliyahu Novi told the Jews to do that on Hara Carmel. A Novi has the right to do Hara Sha'am. So this, the Noide Behuda says that this is what Esther Mordechai did, was a Ra Sha'am. The question is on Yael. Yael was not a Navi. And there you can't say her Shah. That's Ramai, the question. Ramai, which one was her Rad Shah of Mordechai and Esther? That she committed adultery. Which one? Which time? When she went voluntarily. So, 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 yeah. so, if so. When she went, if Shlomo, Abadati, Abadati. If Shlomo, if Shlomo, yes, if Shlomo Amele right. made her Rad Shah for Yom Kippur, right. they were not punished. All right? okay? They can't be punished. You have to listen to a Navi. Eil of okay. Kishnu. Okay. Yeah. So why was... The Orat Sha'ah of Esther yeah. in Bali for her going back to her husband. If it was the Orat Sha'ah. Orat Sha'ah, but that doesn't change the fact that she's also to her husband. Orat Sha'ah that she suspended. can do it. It was suspended. No, suspended she commit adultery, but not the fact that she can return to her husband. Mm -hmm. Rabbi, it means the Orat Sha'ah in the case of so she had to do it did not have consequences right in the case of Esther it had consequences you're right it had consequences she couldn't go back to her husband you're right you're right yeah, why do they consider it adultery even if she saved the Jewish people because it was in fact adultery 
But she didn't do this it was a rod job. She didn't right? do it because she wanted to do it. Right. She did it because. Okay, but it's still adultery, right? It's still adultery. Mm -hmm. I don't see her why it was yeah. really done. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe the question is, mm. would she receive mercy from Hashem for the adultery? Because yes, she, she received mercy. Well, that's what I'm saying. I was a Rajat, was an emergency suspension. Uh, so why couldn't she go back to her head? Uh, this is what they said. Well, right, because if it's suspended, then she should be able to go back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But she but, yeah, but, uh, uh -huh. we, 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 we were wrong. Yeah, well, that's a good point. Uh-huh. Life is full of tragedies and paradoxes. And that's why Esther said, My God, my God, why did you forsake me? She was quoting King David. Huh? What do we find? In Tillin. Yeah, because she speaks as if she's... Kaylee, Kaylee, Lama Zaftani, it's a posuk in Tillin. Kaylee, Kaylee, Lama, Lama Zaftani. How do we know that she said it? The Gemara here says, the Gemara bring it up that she quoted that posuk. She's not too sure. The Gemara over here. Yeah, that's, that's, the, the, that's the risk she's willing to King take. David said it, but King David said everything in Tillam. So all uh, he said for himself. Speaking about himself. himself. Great but great great Chazal applied it to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to Esther. People, there's people right? who place their whole theology mm. on, that, on that idea. Mm. Sometimes it's and others not so much. He had 18. Mm. Yeah. Which yeah. one? He had 18 wives. King David had 18 wives. Good to be the king, who said that. A king is permitted 18, up to 18. That's why he didn't marry Avisha, because he already had 18. And what did he do with Avisha? Avisha, Avisha, she was just his waitress. He didn't marry her, because he already had 18. But He was not intimate with her. That's what the text says. Why not? And because she already had eight. That's, what that's her. Avisha the Shunami. That's her. Avisha is the Shunami. Shunami, yeah. He was in the same bed. She sat in his lap. There is no individual. Just they didn't have any electric blankets in those days. Right? No electric, right? I think somebody else can like the last thing. That's what I'm saying. It was a good. Okay. I think this is different because she did it to save, right? She did an act of atzala. She did an act of atzala. So Yael did an act of atzala, right? Yael also did an act of atzala. Like she kept the king's desires down by by satiating him, you know. In other words, yeah. if she would have killed the king, she would have gone. Uh, she could have gone back to her. She would have had that one. <laughs> If she would have killed Akhatrer, she could have gone back to her husband. She would have killed him? She had an assassination. But then you got a new problem, a new king. Uh, you know, an unknown uh, oh, an unknown king. King is dead, king. long live the king. The guy who was mm -hmm. underneath, the, the, right. was the dude that started the whole thing. Yeah, right. he would have taken his... The Lord wants to know, why you don't say Halal on Purim? What am I, chopped liver? You say Halal on Hanukkah, right? Right. Uh, but why don't you say Halel on Purim? The Megillah is, is uh, That's one explanation. The Gil is the Halel, right? In the Mishnah also. 14a1, the Gemara deals with that question. What? 14a1. What? The Mishnah? Why don't you say Halel on Purim? The Mishnah is also a part of No, but why don't you say Halel like you say on Hanukkah? Like you say on Pesach? Why don't you say Halel? You said the Megillah is like Halel? That's one explanation. Rachmiel is a Talmud Chacha. One explanation is that the Megillah is the Halel. Mm -hmm. Reading the Megillah is like saying Halel. And therefore the Me'iri, Paskins, I don't, I don't think we pass like that. If you don't read the Megillah on Purim, you should what? Yeah, yeah. Say Halel. We don't pass like that, but that's the Me'iri's opinion. Since one of the reasons you don't say Halel on Purim is because the Megillah is what? Like the Halel. So he paskins the Meir, he's a Das Yochit. That if you don't have a Megillah, then you should say Halel. But we don't paskin like that. But you see, the Gemara gives a few reasons of why you do not say Halel on Purim. On 14a1, the Gemara asks, see the right side? On 14 Abraham 1, the right side, the Gemara asks, you see that? Yehochi Halel Nami Neymar, why don't you say Halel on Purim? See that? 
Look at footnote 12. You see, Mela, footnote 12? What's the, the, the kasha? If it was appropriate to utter a song of praise at the sea, upon delivering from the Egyptian bondage, then surely Hallel, which is also a song of praise, should be decided on Purim in commemoration of the salvation from annihilation. That's, see, that's the question, right? So what does the Gemara answer? One answer is, you don't say Hallel on a nest that took place in uh, Chutz Lawrence. You hear that? Hallel is not said on Purim because where did the nest Purim take place? In Iran. Iran. So there, one second. You know, so a nest that takes place in Chutz Lawrence somehow is what, Aviezer? It's lacking. It doesn't deserve a Hallel. But who we'll said Barossa, if we have a miracle here or uh, in America or wherever. That's not Hallel. We're talking about Hallel. What about Pesach? Oh, oh Rachmiel is ahead of the game. What are you talking about? Where did the Exodus of Egypt take place? The Where? Of this God's after the No, after the Exodus of Egypt took place in Cairo. So what are you saying Hallel on the Pesach for? After the so, 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 see what the Gemara says. You see us in Israel, Nesbuchutz, so how could you say Hallel on the Exodus from Egypt? That also took place, what? <coughs> Outside of Israel. So how are you allowed to say Hallel on Pesach? Yiddick Mur's question. Because that miracle also took place in Chutz Lawrence. It's, it's not where you are now, it's when it happened. Where it happened. But it's also what? when. Well, no, where? Well, now well. it's going to say, so now the Gemara is going to answer. What about Gemara? What's the difference? One second. Kiritanya. So the Gemara answers, it, it, it's... When we left it's not only where, but when. Right, Good. Right, right. On 1482, Kinetanya, you have it? Good. Atla Nechlos Yisrael, Loret, as long as the Jewish people did not yet enter Pisgat Zev, all the other lands were still okay to say Hallel for a miracle. So, Exodus of Egypt, we were not yet in Eretz Yisrael. So, there. That there, if a miracle takes place before we enter Israel, you can say Hallel any place. For the rest of time. That's be- for the rest of time. If the miracle took place before we entered Eretz Israel, and the Exodus of Egypt took place, what? Before. Before, right? But once the children of Israel enter the land of Israel, from that time on, all the other lands were no longer okay to say Hallel for, for God's miracle that occurred there. You want to to place in Israel? What's the problem? What's the Those are modern. We're not saying Hallel Yom HaShoah. What are you Those talking about? saying Hallel. The miracle that took place in Eretz Yisrael, right? So take a look at note 15. For when the nation of Israel is in its land, God himself performs a miracle for us there. Such miracles deserve the ultimate song of praise, Hallel. However, Miracles which occur outside of the land of Israel are performed by angels. They are not sufficient status to say Hallel. But before we entered Israel, Israel uh, then it was okay to say a miracle wherever it took place. So the Exodus took place before, right? But once the Jews entered into Israel, from that time on, from Joshua's time on, any miracle that takes place out of Israel does not deserve what? Hallel, yes. Your Matzmah will take place in Israel or the UN? Where did your Matzmah take place? In you, in you, we declared the state of Israel here in Israel, right? No, because we declared the... Uh, no. We declared the state of Israel, uh, right? The Jewish people declared the mirror, uh, your Matzmah, so that uh, took place here. in the take place in the UN, who, 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 right? Who, 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 Israeli who, who, government declared the, the state of Israel in Eretz Israel. So that deserves saying Hallel because that miracle took place here. It didn't take place in the UN. We defeated our enemies with World War I rifles and seltzer bottles Amen. against seven mighty Egyptian uh, armies and tanks and artillery. If that doesn't deserve a hallel, I don't know what does, right? The miracle took place. The miracle of the Chemat HaShikru, where did it take place? In Brooklyn, it took place here, right? Right. For that, we should say hallel, huh? Mm. But everybody said it was a miracle, the declaration of the UN. Yeah. They say. I had a friend of mine who fought in the, in the uh, Mechemet HaShikron. He said they used World War I rifles and seltzer bottles and sewer pipes. That's what they had. Mm-hmm. Against seven uh, m- equipped modern armies with tanks, artillery, and planes. If that doesn't deserve a hallel, I don't know what does, right? Mm-hmm. 
So anyway, uh, so that's one reason. The Gemara gives another reason. What Rachmiel said, Ramachmin says that reading the Megillah, that's Halel. That's another a reason. So it's like Halel becomes redundant because reading the Megillah is like saying Halel. It's strange. The Megillah doesn't have God's name at all, and that's like saying Hallel. You know why God's name is not in the Megillah? We gave a reason. Another reason would be because every line of the Megillah, you see God's hand there. You read between the lines, you'll see that what looks like a mikra, that looks like a string of coincidences, is all God's hand. So God's name doesn't have to be written in the Megillah because the whole Megillah, Abiezer, the whole Megillah, if you read it carefully, is what? You see God there, behind the mask, peekaboo, masquerade, it's all God. So therefore his name doesn't need to be there because he's there throughout the entire story if you connect the dots. If you connect the dots, you see that it's all God manipulating, is that the right word? Manipulating or what? Controlling events? Calling the shots? That's another reason why uh, his name is not there. <coughs> now the Gemara says, how many prophets were there in Israel? 14A2, the Gemara deals with this. We have 48 prophets recorded, right? That's all the prophets they were. On 14A2, on the right side, the Gemara stated previously that 48 prophets prophesied in Israel. The Suleka, there were no more than 48 prophets. Hmm? There were many more. How do we know there were many more? Look in the book of Samuel. In the book of Samuel, they said there were more than what? 200 prophets. In Elkanah's generation alone, there were what? 200 prophets. One generation alone, so how could you say there are only 48? So the Gemara answers, there were actually m many more than 48. The Gemara says, you know how many prophets there rose in Israel? Double the amount of Egypt, Jews that left, how many Jews left Egypt? How many Jews left Egypt? That's 600,000 men. What about the women and the children? Hello? There were millions. Who said three and a half million? Chavetz Chaim says five million. With the so, uh, Chavetz Chaim says five million, some three and a half. Yehuda Levi says three and a half million. But the point is, the Gemara says there were, were all double Israel. amount of, of the, what? Was it all B'nai Israel level of prophets when they came out of You're the, right. Israel? You're right. When, well, when they at, at the Red Sea, uh -huh. at the sea, and at Matan Torah, at the Red Sea, the Jews reached that level. But okay. there were millions of prophets. With the children, sure, of course. With the children, it came out to three million. Or would it yeah, be that's what Chofetz says. The Yudah lady says three and a half million. Chofetz Chaim says fine. And the Gemara says there were many prophets that arose, double the amount of Jews that left Egypt. So how come only forty-eight are written down? How come only forty-eight are written down? Hmm? What prophets? What are you saying? I don't know. Prophets, Nevi'im. So how come only forty-eight Nevi'im are recorded in Tanakh? They speak for us. They so the Gemara for, says that what? They speak for Those us. millions of Nevi'im were not speaking to us, so therefore we don't have to know what they say. The Nevi'im that are recorded in, in, the, in the Tanakh, they speak, they speak to us. They speak to us. Right? They speak to us, so therefore they're recorded. And those that were not needed for posterity were not recorded. So the 48 Nevi'im are speaking to us. You hear? So therefore what? So people say we don't have prophets today. We do have prophets. Just open up the Yishayo, Yecheskel, right, etc. 600,000 men plus a million prophets? Is that what you said? No. The Talmud says that there arose in Israel more prophets than Jews that left Egypt. So how come only 48 are recorded in the Bible? 
Why are those millions of Nevi'im throughout Jewish history, how come their prophecy is not recorded? So the Talmud says, why? Because they only spoke for their time. We're not interested in ancient history. But the Bible, may like a GPS. What does GPS mean? God's personal system. So the Nevi'im speak to us today. Those that didn't speak to us, we don't care what they said, therefore they're not recorded. They were for their times. What? They were for their times. They're only for their times. But Isaiah, Yechezkel, Yermio, etc., they speak to us. Chavakuk, Ovadia, they all speak to us. And therefore they are recorded, right? Strange Gemara over here. Strange Gemara. Esther was playing a double game over here. <laughs> you want to go through this Gemara? She was a daring lady, this Esther. Very daring. You take a look. During the Kiddush, the, sec- uh, the third and the second Kiddush. Uh, Esther, take a look over here. Uh, hmm. On 13b, one second. What did she want? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe it was Mordechai. Yeah, it's Haman. Yeah, it was Haman. Yeah. Free, free, free. Maybe it was Mordechai. Yeah. To save the Jewish people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 13b2. This is really a... Maybe you should turn off the tape. I think 13b2, I think we should turn off. Hit the pause button. 13b2. Sorry, guys. Mm-hmm. Why is the holiday called Purim? It's being poor. Poor in, a, in, in Persian means lottery. Well, so we what? Help, we help the poor? What? Well, according to the Zohar, Yom Kippurim, a day like Purim. Yom Kippur is a day like Purim. Very strange. But uh, literally, Purim is a Persian word that means lottery. So what? So 13b3, you see that on the right side, the Megillah continues. The Megillah continues on the right side. Hippil Pur. He threw a lottery, which is the best month to kill the Jews. He was superstitious. So you look at note 40, Melech. That's why the holiday is called lottery. Just because Haman threw a lottery, that's why we give a name. Of lottery to the Antif, what is it? Just because of Purim? Because of Haman. But anyway, look at note 40. See, Haman planned to destroy the Jews. And he drew what? Lots to determine which is the best day to carry out his plan. Right? And, and it came out, which month did it come out? Adar, which is tonight, right? Tonight. Tonight, tonight, tonight you wish for the Shadar bed, right? Sir, it's still, it's still, it's still but tonight you say Yala the other, no? Yeah. But it's still Adar is still. Okay. It came out of Adar. It's not Rosh Kodesh, it's Sof Kodesh. Samach Simcha Gedola. Why was he so happy that the, the month came out when he threw a lottery? It came out that Adar is a lucky month to kill the Jews. Why was he happy, Mela? Why? Because he, he knew that um, Adar is the month that Holy Moses what, died. So he felt that this was what an unlucky month for the Jews, and he therefore felt confident that he would succeed. But he didn't know. He didn't know that Moshe was also what. Born. Born in Adar. <laughs> Why didn't you check Google? <laughs> Google. It's very Kabbalistic. Moses also was born on the month so of Adar. Like certain, no, certain things are resting uh-huh. Pesach because they're only awake mm-hmm. on Pesach. So right before Pesach, they're sort of down. Moshe was born and he died on the seventh of Adar, right? He went to the Kabbalah. Born and died on the seventh. Yeah, he born, born and died in the same month, in the same day. So therefore, he was in fact not considered, uh, it's not, it, it is not considered an unlucky month for the Jews, because Moshe was also born 
T footnote 43. You see that on 13b4? Marvim is Moshe's birth on that day compensated for the day's negative aspect. Hmm? I'm going to tell you, I'm bored. That's why he chose that time. Mm-hmm. Why it came down that time. Why it was happy when it came down. Haman felt lucky because Moshe died in the month of Adar, right? Uh-huh. But he didn't know that Moshe was also born in the month of Adar. Uh-huh. That he didn't know. Moshe was born in the month of Adar. He didn't know that. Why didn't he know it? Just check your uh, Look for the rabbi. YouTube. Or YouTube. Oh, no. I have a deeper explanation. I believe. I believe. Moshe's birth and the way he was rescued when he was a baby, was that supernaturally? Yeah. He was put in a basket and he, and he floated down the river and Bas Pyro just happened to what? Walk by to take a bath. She couldn't come earlier to take a bath or later to take a bath. She just had to come take a bath then. Isn't that a miracle? That but is that an open miracle? Or is that a uh, hidden miracle? Haman didn't know that God also operates through Derech HaTeva. The birth of Moshe, he didn't realize. He said God will no longer split the Red Sea for them, no more the ten plagues for them. That's over. That's over. Forget it. God has abandoned them. Now they're vulnerable to me. But he didn't realize that even when God no longer performs supernatural miracles, he continues to what? Hide behind the mask, David. Get it, Purim? He hides behind nature. The little basket floating down the river. Couldn't the daughter of Pharaoh take a bath a little bit later? A little early? If she just had to take a bath now, as the basket floats by? It looks like a coinky dinky. Esther had to win the beauty contest. There weren't prettier girls than her. Miss Italy. I think Miss Italy made her more pretty. She was was no youngster either. Right? No spring chicken. She wasn't. Mordechai just happened to hear Big Son of Sarah's plotting. Why couldn't they plot before he walked by or after? Right. Haman didn't realize that even though God no longer performs supernatural miracles, he continues to what? From natural in Behind the mask. Right. Get it, for him? The mask that we call nature. In fact, Hatev on Hebrew, nature in Hebrew has the same numerical value as what? Hello, Kim. Winky dinky. That's what Haman didn't realize. The birth of Moses and the way he was saved, that was not an open miracle. That was a completely Nes Nistar. Like the whole Purim story. So even when God no longer splits the Red Sea for us, or does ten plagues for us, he continues to provide for us, to care for us behind the mask. Peekaboo. The mask that we call Teva, which is Gematri Elohim. That Haman didn't realize. That's what the Gemara means. But he could have checked YouTube and find out that, that, that Moses was born, what? In Adar. But this is the deeper meaning. This is what he didn't get. He didn't realize. God is always looking out for us behind the mask, the poorer mask. All of us are wearing a mask. What's the mask? Body suit. Masks who I am. Me too. Me too. I'm not my body suit. I'm a soul man. All of life is a Purim. We are wearing a mask, and he's wearing a mask. But after we die, says the Zohar, my mask comes off, and his mask comes off. And like, After we die, we shed the mask. No longer masquerading. Get it? Masquerading. Mask. Mosiah was. Peekaboo. Mosiah was wearing a mask. What? 
Moshe was wearing Who's Moshe? Moshe. 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 Moshe was wearing a mask when he go down to Ah, uh, uh. Cuz he was a head eating. Well, when was he, he not when he was teaching Torah to the Jews, then he was not wearing a mask. When he was downtime, relaxation time, then he no, put on a mask. The mask. But when he was teaching Torah to the Jews, he was not wearing a mask. Mm. Pretty interesting. Why poor him such a great youngster, right? The last one, uh, what? Uh, the last one want Purim to be, uh, to have Malacha? Mordechai, if you look at the Megillah, very good, Rachmiel raises a very interesting point. Very interesting point. Let's look at the Megillah. We got the books here. What did Mordechai and Esther want? When they instituted their yontid, look what they, look what they wanted. Look in the Megillah here. Page 699, page 699 in this book, if you want to look, yeah. you want to look pass it down, page 699. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Look what Esther and Mordechai want. Rachmiel made a very good point here. On page 699. Out in verse 19. In the English it's... Um, what is it in the English? Chapter 9, verse 19. How did you know? 919. Yeah, Thank you. 919. The man is a genius. No, I got a computer. Out came now. Yehudim ha-prozer yoshim bora pa-oshim is yoy mar ba-osar. Lachodesh mish... Uh, Simcha Umishte, what's the next word? The Yomtov. Mordechai and Esther wanted Purim not just to be a day of feasting and joy, but Yomtov. What does the word Yomtov mean? Yomtov means not to do Malacha. They wanted it, the word Yomtov means forbidden to do Malacha. But did the Sanhedrin accept that? They wanted. Simcha Mishte Yom Tov, which says no malach is allowed, but take a look. What was accepted? Hmm? Look at Pasuk Chavbet. Chavbet, Hayom HaShanochu Bahem HaYehudim Yeveyem, HaChodesh Nefak Lahem Yogel Simcha Me'evel, Yom Tov, last is also Yemei Mishte Simcha. So they accepted Mishta Besimcha, but they didn't accept that it should be a day of what? Of Isra Malacha. That they didn't accept. So Nedin wouldn't accept that you can't make up a day that you're not allowed to do Malacha. So the Mishta Besimcha part they accepted, but they didn't uh, accept the part that it's a Yom Tov where you can't do Malacha. That part they didn't accept. Yesterday we talked. One minute, and therefore on Purim you're allowed to get married. Do you know that? You're allowed to get married on Yom Tov? No. Why are you allowed to get married on Purim? Because it's not Isra Malacha. Since you're allowed to do work on Purim, so you're allowed to get married on Purim. But on a Torah Yom Tov, when you're not allowed to do work, you can't get married because ain't Marvin Simcha besimcha. How do you say that in English? Ain Marvin Simcha Simcha. You don't mix one Simcha with another. But you don't yes. say that about Purim and Hanukkah. Because it's mutab to do Malacha and therefore you can get married in Purim and Hanukkah. Yes, you have a question? Combining all the yes. If, if yesterday we talked about how, how Esther had to bring proofs that she had brought her Kodesh to the Sanhedrin. Right, she had a proof to them. Right. And right, that she, she was a Navi, and she and that she convinced them that she was a Navi. So why wouldn't they accept her wish? Why wouldn't her? they accept? That's a good question. 
So why wouldn't they accept the Yom Tov part? The man is asking a bomb question, Avi Ezra. Once Esther provided her bona fides, what's the word? Bona fides. Bona fides. Is that a French word or what? Oh, Meaning what? Good faith. Proof? No. That she's you're, a Navi. You are true. True, that's right. They accepted her as a Navi. Otherwise, they would not have taken the book into the canon and established the Yontem. Why did they reject? That's a very good question. Why did they reject that part about, you hear what he's asking, David? About Isra Malach? I don't know the answer to that. Can you recall it? You hear what he's asking? Yes. Can you, recall, Do you have an answer? What's can you question? recall first the reason why she gave the proof that she was an enemy? Uh, uh, Megillah 6. Yes. What was it? What? I remember. The proof that, because it says that, how would she know what Haman is thinking? The young yes. Haman, the Levi, how would you know it? And, and then she said that the days of Purim will never cease. 2,500 years later, how could she know that? How could she make a statement like that, that Purim won't cease 2,500 years later? So the Sanhedrin were convinced that she was what? A Novi. So Melech is asking, David, David, Melech is asking the question. So why didn't they accept the part of Ari I don't know. Maybe they were just Maybe. What? Maybe. If she's a Novi, because a you Novi know, cannot change the Torah law forever. Maybe that's why. I don't know. A Novi can do a raw show, but they can't. A Novi <laughs> can't do a permanent change. To say that this day is also the Malacha forever, no Novi can say that. A Novi can do a temple where we injunction. Oh, she wanted to make but it he a can't. Whole but he can't. You can't make up a day that changing the Torah says that only these days you can't do Malacha. So that far, they were not willing to go, then right? Then why would she have the nerve to maybe ask she, Maybe she was testing them. This is only a test. I think that's the answer. Let's see, you guys are on the ball, right? Where do we know from? That we I think this is only a test. <laughs> only three on five minutes. What? Where do we know from? Look in the, in the Chumash. Where? Look in Pasha's Ray, look in Pasha's Kisisha, Pasha's Yeah, it says all the old days that are Asa Malacha. It doesn't say the other days, right? Okay, so you can't make up your own days, right? A doctor for the computer? Computer doctor? He wants me to take this video and put it on my computer. Why can't you do it after the class? After, after, after. After, right, Jose? Yes, after. After, after. So isn't it strange, Mel? Why do we call a yontif? Because the wicked Eichmann, he chose to make a lottery, pour him, so we call the holiday after Eichmann. I mean, uh, what's his name? Uh, Haman. You had a question on the table? No, repeat the question. The, the Megillah says, why is it called Purim? Hippil Purim. Hippil Purim, because Haman made a uh, lottery, which is the most auspicious month to kill the Jews, and it came out Adar. So because Haman threw a lottery to determine which month is lucky to kill the Jews, so we have to name our holiday lottery? Why not? Because Eichmann called the day a uh, lottery, so what's it got to do with us? Hmm? Purim means a lottery? In Jew Purim means a lottery in Parsi. Purim is a lot. In, in, in Parsi. My wife is Persian, so she can testify to that. Uh, so Haman called the lottery, so what? Have you asked any question on the I table? Do. I do. Uh, in Judaism, the name of the Chag defines what took place. Tamos. Pesach. What does Pesach mean? Passover. Passover. That's what took place. In Judaism, the name of the Chag determines what took but place. This is not One minute. Uh, Chanukah. Chanukah Samizbeach. The Maccabees rededicated the Mizbeach, right? They made a new dedication on Mizbeach. A Sukkot. What does Sukkot mean? Sukkot. Booths. Sukkot. Pizza hut. No, huts. <laughs> the God made us huts. We call the young... Uh, Shuas, the festival of what? Of counting weeks. What does it got to do with anything? So the Ramban says, Chag Shvuot, the festival of exchanging vows. The word Shvua in Hebrew means what? Mm -hmm. Vow. That's where the Goyim have, when you get married, we exchange vows. Shua means vow. V-O-W. Shua means an oath. Ramban says, yes, the name of the Chag defines what took place. God swore eternal love to us, and we swore eternal love to him. It's Chag Shuvot, the festival, where we and God exchanged what? 
vows. So therefore, getting married is called exchanging wedding vows. They got everything from us. So in, in Judaism, the name of the Chag defines what took place. So what does what the lottery got to do with what? With, the, with the, what took place. That's the question I'm asking. It seems appropriate. Why is it appropriate? What took place? The, Life looks like a crapshoot. It looks like a lottery. Things just there. happen by chance, but that's just a masquerade. The Don't be fooled by the mask of the Purim. It's an illusion. Yeah. It looks like a lottery, but nothing happens by chance. Mm. Look behind the masquerade. So the name defines what took place. Capish? So in this case, it should be not Purim. That's why we call it Purim. No, no, it should be Kipurim. Yom Kipurim. No, no, no. Yom Kipurim is something that. else. Kipurim. Keilu Purim. Keilu Purim is like not the best thing on Purim. You know? Kipur. Life to us looks like a lottery. It looks like but everything really happens like by chance. Chocolates. But that's just a mask. Get it? The masquerade of Purim? Like Don't be fooled by the gorilla mask. Look behind the mask. What you see is not always what you get. That's the message of Judaism, which is the message of Purim. That's why it's such a great young kid, young kid Purim, right? Young kid Purim. Okay. Thank you. What time do you normally do? We begin at 20 to 11 and we finish at 12.30. You can stick around maybe at 12.30. It's supposed to go to around Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay. Are you well? Sure. Thank you, son. <laughs> okay, any other questions? I, it's, if it's about lottery, is any lottery gun game on? What? Yes. So, some people do. Okay, lottery games on Purim. You win a, a flight to Jerusalem, to Tel Aviv. If you are a bro, they make lotteries. Who is going to win a flight to, to Israel? But we're like in homes. Like, you know, they do the... The, the, the dreidel. The dreidel on in Hanukkah. Hanukkah. So is there any uh, games that are done, like lottery? Or drinking games? The 24th? The 25th? Uh, the 24th of December. Mm -hmm. In some places, they play cards. <laughs> Why you left? Nittel, nittel is nittel, like a, yes. no, nittel. What does nittel mean? <laughs> An excuse not to learn, what? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions, comments? Um, tonight is for the Shadar, all right? Strange Gemara here than in Megillah. If we go back to the Gemara, strange Gemara. The Haman did more for the Chuvan movement. Yes. That Haman was the father of the Balchuvan. Strange statement that Haman was the father of the Balchuvan movement. You getting this? <laughs> Haman was the father of the Balchuvan movement. Why? Hmm? Hmm. Can you recover? <laughs> Keep it. Yeah. <coughs> it's always like that. Uh huh. The talk is so ring. Uh huh. Just 
Be careful putting in and pass out. Mm -hmm. 14A1 says that, that Haman was the father of the BT movement. Are you getting this? 14 Abraham 1, on the left side, the, Gemigo, the, the, the Megillah continues. You see that? It's an extra book there, no? The, Meg the Megillah continues. The Yosa Melech Tabato. You see that? The Megillah continues. 14B1? 14B1 uh, on the uh, left side, the Megillah uh, continues. 14B1. 14 Boy 1, the Megillah continues. The Yosa Melech Tabato. The king removed the signet ring to put in effect the final solution to destroy all the Jews. Omar Rav Abba Bar Kahana, Gidoila Hasoras Tabat, Yotemar Boim Shmon and Avian, Shev Shev and Avian, Shazab Yisrael. The removal of Hashverish's signet ring, which Haman sealed the evil decree, was greater, did more for the Tshuva movement than what? Than all the 48 prophets and seven prophets in Israel. Yeah? All the prophets were unable to cause the Jews to do what? Tshuva. Right? Yet the Elu, but as soon as Haman got the ring to kill the Jews, all of a sudden the Jews became what? Bala Tshuva. Isn't that amazing? Hmm? Look at note 7, Aviezer. You with me? Note 7. Okay. What is it saying? Is it, a you, you, it begins at you, you No, removal of the signet ring. Note 7, right? 14A1. 14A1 or 14B1? 14A1. Removal of the signet ring prompted the Jews to decree fast for Chuba. As it says in every province. Right. The king's command and his feet extended. There was great mourning among the Jews, fasting and weeping. For a king to entrust his ring to an underling was a highly unusual act. The Jews realized that it was what? Hmm? So this caused the Jews to become all Bala Tshuva. So Haman did more for the Tshuva movement than all the prophets of Israel. Isn't that a strange statement? Hmm? Therefore, we name a cookie after Haman. Isn't it strange we name a cookie after Haman? Haman Tashin. Dafke ears. Ah, Haman Tashin. Osnai Haman. Dafke the ear. Why the ear? Haman Tashin. Because he got us to listen to Ah, ah, ah. Osnai Haman, he got us to listen. Ah. Tony Rabbonan. She top of 14A1. Tony Rabbonan. Forty-eight prophets and seven lady prophets prophesied in Israel. They did not retract or didn't add anything except for what? The mitzvah, reading the Megillah in every year. Well, Hanukkah, there's no Megillah to read. No, but it's not part of Tanakh. It's not part of Tanakh. The Gil and Esther is part yeah, of Tanakh. You have it. Yeah. To the Sefer of the Hashmonaim. Not part yeah. of Tanakh. Rabbi, I have to go, but before I go, yeah. you want to make the telephone call? Uh, no, I'll call later, thank you. Shikaya, Shikaya. Now look at footnote 8. You see footnote 8? Even though various enactments, have a good day, even though various enactments were promulgated by the prophets, they are not viewed as augmenting the Torah. Rather, they were established only to secure existing mitzvahs. For example, Shlomo instituted the mitzvah of Eruv yeah. as a protective fence against Shlomo. carrying on Shabbos. Shlomo Melech, he made up the Eruv. You know, seven, seven mitzvahs of Rabbanan, one of them was Eruv. So Shlomo Melech Sanhedrin made up Eruv, they also made up until Asi This is not a Toshif. This is called Shem Mitzvah Rabbanan. But there was no scripture, there's no... But Megillah Sesta was actually a book added to Tanakh. Right? So Eru is a protective fence around the scripture prohibition against carrying on Shabbos, yeah? But Esther actually added a book to the Bible. Right? She added a book to the Bible. Mm-hmm. 
Interesting, right? Any questions, comments? So why didn't, was it the, the Dead Sea Scrolls were uh, the Essenes? The Essenes wrote it. Right. They were what? a sect in Judaism. Right, but why didn't they have Esther? You, they don't have Esther because at that time, you know, all, not all the, um, Esther had to fight away into the canon. So maybe when they wrote the book, it wasn't finalized yet. Mm. Hmm? <laughs> Some historians say that J.C. was a member of the Essenes. Impossible. Some say that he came from the it's Essenes. Impossible. They lived out in the desert there by the uh, yeah. the caves, the Qumran caves. He wasn't the one who made himself a god. That was that was. That came later. That, that was, was Paul, Paul, right? Paul. Yes. He came after he was dead yeah. already, yeah. no? On the road to Damascus, yeah. yeah. Right. And David Davidson, when he comes back, because he comes back as a Jew. Who? J.C. J.C. When he comes back. When he comes well, back, he was a Jew. He was born as a Jew. Second well, coming? Mm -hmm. We're not sure who his father was. <laughs> what a strange statement that Haman did so much for the Tuba movie. See that? Uh, he has a 14A1 on the left side. The Megillah continues. You see that? Gidoila, Soraj, Tabat, Yosna, Boy, Shmon, Levim, Sheva, Nebios, Nesaba, Lani, Yosai. Oh. Pretty amazing, huh? He prophesied evil decrees. Who? Oh. Um. Um, didn't prophesy anything. He just wanted to murder the Jews, right? <clears throat> yeah. Um, 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 Now, the Gemara doesn't mention who the 48 men prophets are, but it mentions who the seven lady prophets are. Do you know that? Hmm. On 14A3... Well, the, the male prophets had books. The well, male prophets. Every one of them. Right. But uh, a lot of them had books named after But the them. Talmud does mention the seven lady prophets on 14A3. The Gemara stated previously on the left side, the Gemara stated previously on the left side uh, that seven prophets is prop Israel. The Gemara now enumerates them. Sheva Nebios Maninu. Who are the seven lady prophets? Who are they? Sarah, Miriam, Miriam, Deborah, he Hannah, Hannah Abigail, Abigail, Linda, and Old Esther. Esther. Oh, Esther, the last one. Hmm? Now the Gemara brings proof that each one was what? A prophet. Sarah. Sarah Miriam. had another name. She had a name, Jessica. Oh, Yiska. How do you say Yiska in English? Jessica, right. why was Sarah called Yiska? Why was Sarah called Yiska? Sarah, oh, Sarah. Sarah was called Jessica. Yiska means to gaze. How do you say gaze in English? Say Just, no, Jessica. Is, yeah. See. Why was she called Yiska? Because she saw with the holy inspiration. Wow. Jessica means to gaze, to see. So therefore, uh, Sarah was called Yiska. Dovaracher, another reason why she's called Yiska, everyone gazed at her beauty. Everyone gazed at her beauty. So therefore, Sarah was called so Yiska. Show me that, that, that summer, that, that summer, that summer. Give a, see footnote 31. You see footnote 31? That's marvelous. Yeah, yeah, so I was reading now about it. Footnote 31, you see that? Shemalecha. Yeah. The root. The root sacha means to gaze, to look. Maybe you can tell her that. Huh? Yiska. That was the name of Sarah. In English, it's Jessica. Yiska. Can you formulate a, a name with the first letter of each name? Uh, usually goes into J. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Yisro, they say Jethro. Jethro, right. right. Yisro, right, right. they say Jethro. Yaakov, Jacob. Jacob. So Yisro is Jessica. Yeah. Get it? Thank you. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so that was Sarah's other name. Sarah. 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 Wow. Mm -hmm. Gerald is Yehuda. The verse in Genesis Gerald? 11. Gerald, Yehuda. I mean, Gerald, Gerald 11, 29. That huh? Yisro and Sarah I know one say. I see. See, like and Clark Kent, Superman, right? Mm -hmm. Gerald, yeah. Gerald, yeah. So a G, you know, soft G, J sound, which Hebrew doesn't have. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yiska. 
A lot of languages don't. Interesting. Spanish doesn't have a sound like that. Okay. And Miriam, she was a prophet. It says that Miriam, the prophet, is took. So it's an open verse that she uh, was a prophet. Now, the spoke of says Jimmel. 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 Well, Jimmel. he used a chick chuck. <laughs> you know, there, there's a way of uh, making it modern Hebrew, but it's not real. Miriam, the prophetess, right? The sister of Aaron. Wasn't she the sister of Moses, too? Uh, Why is she only called the sister of Aaron? The more answers. Prophetess. She was a Navi when she was only a sister of Aaron, right? Before Moshe was born. What did she say? She said, My mommy is going to bear a son who will be the savior of Israel. So she prophesied when she was only the sister of Aaron that her mother is going to give birth to what? Baby Moshe. So she was already a Navi when she was only the sister of Aaron and not yet the sister of Moshe. Bishaw Shanola, the smala kalabayis kule ora. When Moshe was born, the entire house was filled with light. Oma Davia, Nashkal Rosha, her father stood up and kissed her on the head. Oma Labiti, your prophecy has been what? Fulfilled. Hmm. However, when Moshe was put into the, into the river, her father rose and gave her a sh- bop on the head. He gave her a bop on the head. <laughs> gave her a patch. <laughs> and I said, Mochal Rosha, Lama Labiti, my daughter, what's going to happen with your prophecy? And the Tziv, therefore it's written, and his sister, she stood by the reeds over there, right, to know what's going to happen Lodat Mayehe Besofni the Ota, what's gonna how, how will the prophecy play out? If Moshe will survive, and eventually a prophecy will be true that he will what save Israel. So she had to make sure that a prophecy comes true. Another can't sit back. Another has to make sure, says the Ramban, that his prophecy plays out. Yes, <laughs> you that look at the Ramban. That's what he says. Therefore, Nos and Anodi was so nervous when uh, when Adeliyot took the throne, remember? And he came to Bathsheba says, we have to come up with a plan to protect your life and the life of your son Shlomo. So Ramban asked, why was he so nervous? He had prophesied years before that what? When David dies, who's the new king? Yeah, but sometimes Shlomo, prophets, so why do you get nervous for? Sometimes prophets don't see the in, uh, he fulfillment within their that. lifetime. But you see that Anavi has to make sure that his Mabua can't sit on his hands. And therefore, Miriam did what she did, and Nasan Anavi did what he did. And Ramban explains that's why Yosef Atzadik had to orchestrate the dreams and torture his father to make sure that the Nabuah comes true. Otherwise, Yosef would be guilty of uh, really torturing his father. What about Kibadav? But Anavi says, Ramban, there in Pasha's Ayigash, uh, that Anavi has to plan and scheme to make sure his Nabuah plays out. Mm. Otherwise, Yossi would be guilty of torturing his father. Mm. But it's all part of the plan. Anavi has to make sure the Nabuah plays out as much as humanly possible. He has to make it happen. And, he, he gets and the Ben Ishchai takes off on this. Yeah. Listen to Ben Ishchai? The Ben Ishchai, uh, he asked the question, how come, how come David was allowed to eat the lechem upon him? When he came to... Uh, the city of Nob, he had nothing to eat, right? So he had to eat the lechem upon him. Azar eats lechem upon him, chayv nisim dey shemaim, right? What was the head to eat the lechem upon him? Didn't Hashem? So what? Hashem had already promised him through the prophet Shmuel and Nob, he already had the shampoo, that he's going to be the next melech. So if you're going to be the next melech, you can't starve to death. What's your head to eat the lechem upon him? Any Jew can't starve to death. But you have a haftach and Shmuel and you have to be the king. No. So what right did he have to eat the lechem upon him? You can't starve. One will fall from heaven. So what right did he have to eat the lechem upon him? Didn't Hashem yeah, promise him that he's lechem. going to be the next melech of Israel? So yeah. obviously he can't be dead. Uh, so he's never going to starve. So Ben Ishchai says, yes, you'll be the next king if you eat the lechem upon him. If there's no food to eat, then you have to eat the lechem upon him. Uh, it's like Hezkiah told Hezkiah. Right? Uh, uh, no, the, the Novi told Hezkiah. You still you have, have to do the mitzvah. That's right. You still have to do Keep what you have to do. Hashem's promise is dependent that you still have free will. Right? So if you don't eat the lechem upon him, you'll be dead. 
Right. You'll be the king if you eat the lechem upon it. There's no other food to eat. That's what you have to do. So, uh, right? Yeah. The same thing over here. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Shkoyach, shkoyach. Mm -hmm.